Hey there YouTube, AJ here. And uh, today I got the feeling I need another skate obstacle for my little uh, driveway skate park. I mean, I really don't need one, but you know, I haven't mastered the ones I have, but yeah, sometimes you just want something new to play with. And that's what I'm doing today. So I'm gonna be building a new obstacle for free, essentially, and showing you how I do it. So we'll start off with, I'm gonna build a rail. I've got this, eh, it's about eight foot four inches of gas pipe left over. You might remember I used this same gas pipe for the coping on my slappy pad. So I had this eight foot section left over from that. And I recently decided I wanted to learn to skate rails. So I'm gonna build one to play on. Now this is gonna be a short rail. I could cut a piece off and weld it. I do have a welder so I could weld that. But but I wanted to show that anyone can really do this and you can do it for free without a lot of special tools. I am gonna use my power miter saw because I have it and it's easy to use. Uh, you could do this with a regular power circular saw and, yeah, or you could actually do it with hand tools. Take a lot more work, but you know, that's up to you. Uh, other than that, I'm using like a square tape measure. Um, Technically, I did buy these screws and the wood glue that I'm going to be using, but you can scrounge and reuse nails and screws salvaged from trash. You can do that if you want. Just easier, so I'm going to have a little bit of, tiny bit of money in this. Not much since I buy this kind of stuff all the, all the time for other projects, so it's kind of just, you know, left over from other projects. So technically, it's kind of free. Anyway, uh, the wood I got, I'm going to be using today. Uh, if you go to Home Depot, back where they have the lumber, in the farthest corner, normally there's a station set up to where they cut wood for customers. Somewhere around that area, they will have what's called a cull cart, C-U-L-L, -L, and it's basically broken pieces of wood, cut off pieces of wood, wood that was cut, miscut, Anyway, they sell it 70-75% off a lot of the time. Also in that area, there's also normally a uh, big plastic trash barrel and occasionally it will have wood in it. And that wood is, if you ask nicely, normally they'll just give it to you. That's what happened here. Um, there were, they had these three pieces. This one used to be this long, but I cut off a piece of it for another project. But anyway, they had these three pieces in the trash can. And they, these are treated two by six um, planks. And they're almost five foot long, a couple inches short of five foot long. And they were in the trash can. I went to the guy running the department that day. I asked him, hey, are those trash? And he said, yep, you want them? I said, sure do. How much? He said, they're free. And he wrote on there free. I walked out without anything. The gas pipe, I got it a long time ago off of Craigslist. Uh, there was a list for free gas pipe, just come take it. That's where I got that, so I have no money in the gas pipe, the wood, leftover screws and glue from other projects. So, I mean, we're talking pennies here. It's, you know, for maybe technically $2 I have in this. So, that said, I'm gonna to get to thinking about how I'm gonna do this. And I think what I'm basically gonna do is make two short little pyramids like this that the gas pipe will sit in on top of. That's what I'm thinking off the top of my head. So let's get to designing and cutting wood. Okay, so what I've done to start out with is I've cut a bunch of these into six inch pieces and I only want to put two supports under this and my plan is to kind of mount them like this. So cut the, the bottom at an angle here to make that flat, make it sit flat and then I probably need to cut some out of the middle here as well to bring these in closer together because if I do it like this the pipe is only two inches wide, so I'm going to have quite a bit of, of an edge sticking out here, and I'm afraid that might catch. I'm just trying to determine what angle I want to make these at. 
45 would be the easiest just because All right, so the first idea, I got too cute with the angles. Too hard to cut them using this saw. So, and then I went to try to assemble the first pair and I didn't pre-drill the holes, I split the wood. Just realized it was just too, because of the angles I chose to use, it was too complex for, you know, someone using simple tools. So, going with a new plan here, Instead of going six inches long, I'm going to go the same. I'm going to basically make them out of square pieces, cut them the same width, and then I'll put a base on the bottom and I'm going to use all 45 degree angles. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but let's hopefully I can show it better than I can tell about it. So let's, uh, let's get this built. Okay, so here's the new plan. Basically, it's still an A-frame. I cut everything at 45 just to make it quicker and easier to cut because the first time was such a disaster. And then my bolt will go through. This will get screwed into this center support piece. It'll get glued and screwed. It'll get glued and screwed here. And uh, yeah, then I can drill down through and put my bolt through the whole stack. I think that'll work. We'll be good. This time we'll also pre-drill before using my screws so we won't split the wood. So this time before we, we're just going to kind of hold everything in the right position here. I'm going to take a 1 8 inch drill bit. I pre-drill into those pieces. That way they won't split. Get the other one set up like this. There we go. We got the A-frame part made and the bottom base. This will get my, because I used 45 degree angles, using just that is shorter than I really want. That was only, it's only gonna get me like four and a half foot inches up to total. So I wanted to go here, that will get me another inch and a half for five, be six inches to the top of the pipe. So I think that's a good height to, 
uh, to start with. I'll be using these bolts to bolt the, the pipe to the supports. And I need to drill a hole down through the center of everything. And uh, to drill the hole I need for these, I need to use a drill bit. It won't reach all the way through the stack. So I can't attach these yet. What I'll have to do is drill this part separately and that separately and then attach them. But that's not that big of a deal. So basically, I'm going to mark center five and a half. Two and a half would be five, so two and three quarter. Center. Right. Okay, we do want to make sure our stack is centered before we drill the top hole, because hopefully this will be long enough to mark the bottom board. attach this to that. Okay, so we got our supports all made. What I don't like right now is how the rail is going to be sitting in this groove held down by this bolt. And when I go to tighten it down, it's going to want to push these two sides apart. Now, I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but I don't like that it could. And over time, with my weight hitting it, coming landing on the bar, it could break these this wood or cause an issue. So what I'm going to do is take this little piece of 3 8 plywood, and I'm just going to cut a support that will tie this side to this side and give it some strength from pulling apart. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just marking where these plates are going to go so I can put my glue on first. In the end, this will work fine. It's not my most elegant solution I've ever come up with. Sometimes that's the way these projects go on the fly, you know. But this project is really just to give me a beginner rail to learn on. And when I get better, I'm going to want it taller probably anyway or adjustable and I'll probably weld up something then and I'll make it grow for what I need. But for right now, this will be just fine. So that's how that plate's going to work. That will make it nice and strong. It'll make everything really good and strong. Won't have to worry about anything. So I just got to go do, got to go through that process three more times now. All right. So I've got my plates on there, both ends, both supports. Everything should be good and solid. I'm just going to go ahead and let this glue dry, set up, let all this get nice and solid, and then tomorrow I'll come back and I will attach this rail. Alright, so my glue's all dried. Got the bases all nice and sturdy. 
think they're going to be just fine. I don't think they're going to slide on the concrete. So next thing to do is figure out where we're going to mount them. And uh, to do that, I'm just going to use some logic because I couldn't actually couldn't find any references like how far in they should be from the ends. So I'm just going to kind of guess work it. pretty good my logic behind this is I guess if you're coming in from an angle and you go to jump on it you want it to be landing you know you don't want it to be in the weakest point so I'm thinking that might be pretty good I think we'll go with that the foot in to this edge it gives you a solid you know five and a half inches of support kind of in the landing zone. I think that'll be nice and solid and good. So the next thing we want to do is mark where our bolts are going to go. The key thing to do here is they have to be in the same line. They have to be marked at the exact same place. So I'm going to be using carriage bolts which has a smooth head and the square shoulder is what holds it from spinning when you tighten down the nut on the bolt. I'm going to be attaching it from the bottom so the top of my rail is smooth. So to do that, I'm going to be making a T-shaped hole in here that I can put the carriage bolt in, slide it, and pull it through and lock it in. Where the center mark is, that's where I want my bolt to be locked in place so that will be a square and we will take and extend this down a little bit and make a hole like that and I'll file this edge square and basically we will slide it in pull it through to that point and lock it in and we'll do that on the other end but the opposite direction that way when you hit the bar the the forces of you landing on the bar and sliding will be opposite each other on each end to that would help re reduce the chances of everything coming loose so these um, to do that we're going to drill a pilot hole in one two three four you know like five pilot holes and then we'll drill bigger holes that'll connect and allow this to come through. But the maximum size of the hole will be the size of this head here, this square shoulder. So you can see here I've drilled out these holes in a T pattern. That's just my pilot hole. That makes it easier to start, especially on a rounded surface using a smaller bit. Using a larger bit, you know, would make it a lot harder to uh, you know, get a hole straight on your line. So now what I'm gonna do is take the larger bit, which is the same width as the shoulder on my bolt, and I'm gonna drill out all of these holes to that size. Okay, so you can see I've got it roughed out now. Now it's kind of down to some filing work. I got to basically square off this end and I've got to make this end a little wider so the head will slide through. So I'm just going to get a couple files and go at that. All right, so we've got our T-shape cut in here. Uh, that's the way it should go. You can see the bolt head goes through and then you pull it down into the bottom of the T and that's where you, now the bolt can't spin and that's where you tighten it down and it's locked into place. So now that we've got our T shapes cut in to where we can get our bolts in and they can go through our supports. Before we do that, there's one little thing I gotta take care of first. 
and that is on the bottom of our support itself because if we've just put our nut and washer on the bottom we'll no longer sit flat you know then we'll have this stud in the middle that's going to make it rock so what we're going to do is take a larger drill bit and drill in just deep enough for the depth of the washer and the nut Some of you sharper eyed viewers may have noticed something. Yeah, that's not going to work, is it? So, yeah, I knew that was going to happen. These bolts are much longer than needed, um, but that actually makes assembly easier. And all you really need to do is cut this off now. Now, you can do that with a hacksaw, which is just as easy, but I have power tools. So I'm just going to snip it off with an angle grinder. a little beginner grind reel. So I know this is not an optimal grind reel. The rail itself is only two inch in diameter which I know larger is probably easier. Square would be easier. But hey I'm working with materials that I had and basically I've got like two or three dollars in this whole thing if you count the glue and screws. Everything else the wood I got for free, the, the gas pipe I got for free, all of this cost me nothing basically. And you know the other materials, the glue and the screws I had, I didn't have to go out and buy. It's right at six inches tall. I think it's a good height for me to learn on. Um, it is nice and sturdy and solid. It feels like it's not gonna slide or anything when I land on it, so that's good. I can always make this taller by adding another chunk of two by six on the bottom. You know, that's another inch and a half up I could do real easy. So I can kind of make this grow with me for a while. But if I get to the point where I feel I need to progress, I can always weld on legs and make adjustable legs for it. I can improve on this. So I'm, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I like it. Uh, I know what you all want to see. I can't grind on it. Let's see if I can do anything here. You know what? Before I try this, I know I should just go get all my pads, but for now I'm just going to grab my wrist guards and my helmet. Just in case, I'm not going to try anything crazy here, but the other day I fell while warming up and that hurt. <laughs> Alright. Well, that wasn't bad for my very first attempt. Second attempt was worse. It's got some potential. Keep in mind, I haven't warmed up at all, so, you know. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Before I actually do hurt myself, I'm just gonna call it there. And I'm happy with the success, how it feels, how it turned out. I think it will be good for me to learn on. So I, I, I'm, I, I'm going to call the whole project this a success, even though I had some setbacks. Redesign, whatever you want to call it. It's good. I'm happy with it. But 
for now, that's where it's going to end. But be looking for another video soon on me learning how to grind on a rail. Till then, YouTube. Later.